Elections 24, The Power of Your Ex, is an original jackpot podcast brought to you by Jacaranda FM News. Jacaranda FM cannot be held responsible for the views and comments expressed in this podcast. Follow Jacaranda FM News on Facebook and X or go to jacarandafm.com and click on News. Listen to more episodes and the original series at jacarandafm.com. Click on Jackpot or on the apps where you can get all your other podcasts. In the second episode, we look at the factors that influence voting among young South Africans. These are the future leaders, the innovators and the backbone of the country's future. Yet it's the group providing the biggest challenge for the Independent Electoral Commission. Matt Pabalo Baroto has taken a look at the voter registration of young people and we hear from them if they're suffering from voter apathy and what or who is to blame. Voter registration among young people remains a concern even though there was an increase in the number of people between the ages of 18 and 39 who registered to vote on 29 May. This is the generation that will have a stake in the long-term consequences of political decisions. Their participation will strengthen the democratic process and yet there seems to be a divide between their perceptions of politics and reality. Dr. Horanchu, who is 22 years old, will actually be casting her vote for the first time this year. She feels strongly about change, and she's a woman who believes that as young people, we are responsible for the change that we seek to see in South Africa. I think I do tend to take my voice for granted, but I think as a young person... I've come to realize that my voice does actually matter and, you know, taking part of the election process is really important and crucial for bringing about the changes that I want to see. Right now, I can't say for certain which party I'll vote for yet. I am definitely still considering my options and weighing different factors. I'm still reading up on manifestos that are pages long. Um, And also, considering it is my first time, in, uh, you know, voting. I do want to make an informed decision and be certain about my choice. But I think even if I do read up on those things, I think it might just be a decision that I might definitely confirm on the day. And to a young person who's currently listening to us right now and who is confused on whether they should participate in the upcoming elections or not, what would you like to say to that person? It is definitely normal to feel confused or uncertain about your choice, especially if it is also your first time. But I think just remember that you have the power to influence the uh, the direction our society is going to take from the 29th of May. And, you know, advocate for the changes you want to see. I'm pretty sure we all know that young people like us who are in their 20s or the Gen Zs rather, we consume news and content on our smartphones, on our iPads. We are on TikTok, Instagram, as well as X. Do you think that political parties are actually doing enough to try and reach out on these social media platforms as a means to communicate to young people? Political parties that can afford to have influencers advocating on them on social media, I think especially TikTok, and have artists perform whenever they address the public are definitely are pushing and effectively reaching us as young people on social media platforms, but to a certain extent. I mean, the effectiveness, I think, of any sort of political communication on social media depends on how authentic that message is and how we resonate with what exactly it is that they're trying to say. But I think ultimately from what I've seen, I think people are very aware of these tactics and methods and not many people might fall for them. But uh, I think all I can do right now is just applaud these certain political parties for like adapting their strategies and finding innovative ways to like connect with us, my demographic. But what do political parties say? What are they really doing to connect with young people? Not only to campaign, but also to inform and to answer questions. The ANC's Youth League, Wesley Khang, who's actually the national spokesperson, joins us. Wesley, first things first. What do you think is the reason behind young people in South Africa not being interested in voting? Contrary to what you view, it is our concerted effort that young people are going out in numbers. This time around, it's majority of young people have registered to vote. And those that did not register to vote, um, I am of the view that it's just a matter of ignorance. 
but there's more need to do voter education and educate them about the importance of voting. I'm sure you you are quite aware that as young people, there are certain things that just do not work for us anymore. For example, when political parties go out, go to auctioning to campaign, I think a lot of young people don't fall for that stunt anymore. It's much easier to attract them in certain platforms. Is there a different way that the ANC Youth League actually uses to lure young people into voting? Well, firstly said to them, uh, as young people, we have a responsibility to pick up this bait and the generation of Madiba that went to exile, that went to Robben Island, the period in which we live in dictate that we have passed that stage. We are in a new era now. Things are done differently. And as young people, if we want to take charge, if we want to be in control of that particular segment, all of us must then be in all corners of corridors of power and by taking those we need all of us to participate. I was speaking to one of the students at Wits University who is not actually registered to vote and when I asked her why is she not registered to vote her response was that it's because she doesn't really understand politics and she thinks nothing good comes out of politics. What would you like to say to them? To say the least I'm quite flabbergasted. I mean that person is supposed to be learning. That person is supposed to be knowing better. But broadly, including those that did not register, it cannot be that the reason becomes that you've got less of interest in politics. Voting has got less to do with politics, but more to do with taking charge and being part of the solution. In this case, a person who's in their hands of learning, there's an influx of complaints from them with regard to NSFAS. Those things would be changed by all of us coming together as young people and taking charge of our government, changing circumstances and saying this is how we want things to be done. So we are going to push our utmost best, including those that did not register to vote. Beyond these elections, we'll be going closer to them to educate one another about voter registration. In just a few words, why is it important for young people to vote? As being part of the solution, the importance of it is that we are better placed, we understand better circumstances in which our people live in, our country is growing young, and it's young mind, energetic minds that will change those circumstances. We are now joined by Millicent Ngube, a 26-year-old woman who originates from Alexandra, a township in Johannesburg, and she says she sees no reason to vote. In fact, she feels so strongly about it that she didn't even register to vote for the 29 May elections. I have actually considered the potential impact of my vote. Um, But then who do we address those issues to? Who will sit down on the platform and address our issues? Because they will just give the food packages, get um, the minor people to give them votes and then not address the issues at hand. Yes, it does have an impact, because if I don't vote, then it will automatically go to the winning party. Whereas if we all just took the time to go and vote and choose our relevant parties, it could make a difference. But yeah, that's, yeah. Are there any specific changes or improvements that you would like to see in the political process that might encourage you to register and vote in the future? Let us bring in new blood. Let us bring in the younger generation into the front of the political parties. Ones who don't have any politics or history or grudges or knowledge of other people who are in the running. Get young people in there who are hungry for the opportunities and who are hungry to make changes, who are visible in their communities and who have made changes. Let those people run these political campaigns. Not Bumalema, Nibozuma. They they've been there. That's just greed. Surely not voting is in many cases an active decision. It's saying I am not happy with the choices given to me. And that is where a lot of young South Africans find themselves. A mere thirty years into democracy, many fought and died for. Only the ignorant will refuse to give the ANC some credit for a lot of the progress made. But at the same time, the statistics cannot be ignored. 
2023 represented a peak in the youth unemployment rate in South Africa at 50.47%. That is half of the country's young people without a job and many without the prospect of ever getting one. These are millions of able-bodied South Africans who are losing hope. Democracy in itself doesn't put food on the table or pay school fees at the end of the month. Government policies do, and it would be misguided to think that young people cannot figure this out for themselves. If there's one thing that I'm taking with from these three interviews is that as young people, we have the power to change the political landscape of South Africa. And we have the power to actually influence the change that would love to see in our country. First time voters on 29 May were born after 1994. They only know of political freedom. But freedom is not a single act at a ballot box. It is a lived experience. Freedom to educate yourself, freedom to work, freedom to feel safe, and freedom to know your leaders actually care. As the old struggle song says, Yindelendela esi hambayo, kwasho umandela kubalandeli bake. Mandela was right. The journey is indeed long. On May 29, the youth will, one way or another, decide where this journey takes us. South Africa is firmly in the grip of election season. While voting fever is running high, this is also a time to take a look ahead. Mangaliso Kumalo looks at what the current election trends mean for 2029. This year, we'll look at if our country's future political leaders will come from the younger generations. Then surely, this is also the best time to take stock and think about 2029. We continue to ask questions if enough is being done to bring young people on board, to make them feel like they're already part of that political process. Do these young high school boys and girls know what an election is all about? Is the story of voting told to them in a language that they can understand? I got hold of Ndogo Zumsibi, a 22-year-old from Johannesburg, who is expected to be a first-time voter for the 8th government elections in 2029. When asked if she will vote in five years' time, this is what she had to say. Yes, if I were able to vote, I vote simply because if I don't vote, I wouldn't have a say in how our country is run. And also that education, healthcare, economy, all that is affected by our votes or my vote. So actually consider voting important. But 23-year-old Senzi Letango says she won't vote because there isn't enough information. I've been hearing a lot or, or seeing a lot about elections online. Um, I think on the social media sites, there's been a lot of like advertising from the different political parties on what they are promising, on things like that. I don't know, I still feel like it's kind of making empty promises. So I kind of feel like always trying to please the people only when elections are coming. There's a reason why political parties have their own youth leagues. Because it is from where the party will build up, where their future lies. So, what are they doing to get the youth on board? I spoke to Democratic Alliance youth leader Nicolas Nyati to unpack the role of youth leaders for the main opposition and the influence these young members have over the party's followers. South African politics and South Africa as a country is growing young. If you look at our population, our population is growing young. Majority of the electorate is young people. And I think for any political party, it's not even a question of should they include the youth. It's rather a question of do they have competent young people that they're going to include in their list. In the DA, we're a party that believes in diversity, and diversity has to do with age and also with thinking. And also as a party that is serious about the future, you want to have a balance between the old and the new so that you can be able to make them work together and have a succession plan for your party and South Africa. The Economic Freedom Fighters Member of Parliament, Nale Dichira, doesn't agree. She claims other political parties keep young people out of politics on purpose. Because young people are flooding our universities, are flooding our TVs, 
and have the knowledge that is able to empower them to be making different votes, to be casting a vote, and in particular for the EFF, because we've seen that in universities, we've seen that in TVET. A billboard is not enough, a post is not enough, it's for visibility, yes, sure. But a young person wants to be in the know on what are you offering to the country, what are you offering to my household, what are you offering to myself? Because young people actually have a lot to say, <laughs> and they interact with this information. I think it's the era of the smartphone, it's the era of, 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 of advanced technology, right? It's the era of TikTok, where information is so readily available. Even if you don't want to engage um, with politics, somebody will throw a video of, of analyzing manifestos of different political parties, and it will be on your, on your timeline, and you will see it. When it comes to election processes, it's clear political parties and the Electoral Commission still have a long way to go. No, I don't understand how the election process works. But maybe in the future, I'll research more about politics. In particular, is how the IEC is failing on its constitutional mandate and obligation to do voter education and to engage people in all sorts of areas on the voting process, on the voter registration process. The IEC is running a campaign of voter education on Twitter, and that is it. You don't see the IEC doing door-to-door engaging young people. You don't see the IEC in townships. You don't see them in the rural areas unless on voting day. 2029 may now seem far away, but we all know five years in the history of our country can quickly feel like only one day in the life of our democracy. Last word goes to those who hope that by 2029, this election story would have changed. James Sietelo says he has already made up his mind. In five years' time, he plans on making an X. I want to be part of the decision makers. I want to be uh, the, uh, one of those who gets to decide the government of the day. And um, yes, my information mostly has been going through the um, websites of these political parties to source the uh, manifestos, uh, to, to check the manifestos, but also listening to the radio and watching television, watching the news on television. When I looked at the registration um, numbers, those numbers were very positive. Uh, a majority of the people who went out to register to vote are young people. But there, obviously, election day is another, is a, is another ball game. But I believe if we work hard enough to remind the young people and to remind South Africans the importance of voting, I believe that they will come out to the party. The same thing was happening in Zambia, where your electoral support was declining, declining, declining. But it took the youth to stand up in Zambia and say, we are going to stand up and vote for a new government. If you look in, 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 in American politics, it's the youth that stood up and became uh, the forefront with Obama winning elections. And I think that 30 years post-democracy, a person who was born in 1994 only knows the failing government. And as a 30-year-old, that person is going to stand up and rally others and say, enough is enough. Let us vote for a government that is actually going to cater for our needs. It is up to each of us to make full use of all the opportunities we have to try to influence the decisions that our political representatives make at national, provincial and local level. It's now time for political parties to live up to their promises and expectations. For that, only time will tell. Elections 24, The Power of Your Ex, is an original jackpot podcast brought to you by Jacaranda FM News. Jacaranda FM cannot be held responsible for the views and comments expressed in this podcast. Follow Jacaranda FM News on Facebook and X or go to jacarandafm.com and click on News. Listen to more episodes and the original series at jacarandafm.com. Click on Jackpot or on the apps where you can get all your other podcasts.